Welcome, everyone. It's Chris Petrie again, and let's get started with our beautiful ink and wash painting. We're going to start out by doing a preliminary sketch. Once we're done with our preliminary sketch, we're going to actually do our ink over the top of that preliminary sketch, which is fun because you're just going over the top of your sketch, so everything's already done for you. And then after that, we're just going to add in some really simple, beautiful watercolor washes. We'll show you how to mix those colors. Um, I have the palette on the screen when we're doing our watercolor washes, so you'll see all the colors I mix, how to do everything as far as your color selection, and, um, you know, pretty much from A to Z, we have everything covered here for you, so you don't have to do the thinking. You can just basically follow through with the video, stop it at any point you want, and uh, pause and check out the different ways the painting changes from sketch to ink to the watercolor wash over top, finally. So this is the finished painting here. I want to thank you again for coming by, and we'll get started right now. Okay, we just saw the finished ink and wash painting, watercolor painting. So we're going to have really a lot of fun here. We're going to cover all the steps and methods and techniques you're going to need to create this uh, great, awesome and fun uh, painting. The first thing is... Um, you're going to need some uh, India ink. This is Super Black India ink by Speedball. Speedball is, I find, the best um, ink that, that I've found. I've used def several different brands, but I think Speedball is the best um, India ink. Super Black is the color. Super Black Speedball is the brand. So it's Speedball Super Black India ink. This just, it dries pretty fast. It looks beautiful. You can watercolor paint over it once it's dry and it does not uh, reactivate. So it stays, um, you know, solidified on the paper and doesn't reactivate and smudge. So this is just a fantastic um, ink you can use time and time again. The Speedball brand, and it's called Super Black. That's the color, and it's India ink, basically. And you can get these. I've had this for like six or seven years now, this container of um, Speedball uh, Super Black India ink, and it's uh, 16 ounces. And it's still half full, so you'll, you'll, you know, once you buy one container like this, a 16-ounce container, you'll have it for 5, 10 years probably, unless you're doing ink and wash, you know, constantly every week or using it, you know, constantly. But I, you know, I probably do ink and washes once a month maybe. So this lasted me already 5, 6, 7 years, and I still have half a container left. So that's what we're going to use for our ink. And then we just have a small inkwell, plastic inkwell. You can get these online. I often use uh, cough uh, medicine caps. Um, so, you know, those cough medicine things, you, you caps you have on the cough medicine things. You know, once I'm done with those, I wash them out and I set them to the side. And then I use them for ink wells too as well. So you'll just, when we're working on the ink and wash, you'll see we're just going to put a little bit of ink in the bottom of this. Maybe a quarter of an inch of ink or, uh, you know, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch of ink. Only about a little bit like that much on the bottom of this. And then we, we'll have that to do our our ink um, drawing. These are our ink pens. These are just simple bamboo ink pens. And this one here has two, a little bit of a larger side, a little bit of a smaller side over here, point, smaller point, and then like a medium point. And then I have another one here, which is a little bit of a larger point. So for larger uh, uh, sections of the um, ink drawing, maybe larger areas we have to fill in. So between these two, this is all I need, basically. Two uh, bamboo ink pens. One has a small, a small, a medium, and then a large size bamboo uh, ink pen, and that's that's fine. This this will even if you have just one is is fine. You can use. I have a larger one. It's just a little bit. If you're going to do larger sections of really really dark ink, it's nice to have a little bit of a larger ink pen too, just so you can get a larger area covered quickly. But uh, this is what we're going to use for the drawing. And uh, so we have all of this. And we're going to start out by just doing a simple, um, I'll just always go around my, I'll go around my tape. So I put some tape down first. You don't have to put tape down if you don't want. It's kind of nice though. It, once you're done doing the complete painting and you lift up the tape, you'll see a nice border around everything, a nice crisp, clean white border, almost like a mat on the, uh, painting. And uh, that 
that's good. So I just make sure I press down the tape. I press down the tape, making sure it's really secured to the paper, right where the edge of it is, where it touches the paper. This way no, nothing leaks under there, water or ink. Especially on the bottom here. The bottom, because everything, my board has a little bit of a tilt to it. So I work on a, a masonite board with a little bit of a tilt, maybe like a seven or eight percent uh, tilt. Eight degrees or 10 degrees tilt. Okay. Okay, that's what we have now for our paper set up with our tape. And then next we're going to actually start our sketch. So um, we're just going to have a fun time doing this and we're not going to get too bogged down with tons of details. Let's just keep it real simple. We'll make it like a beautiful country scene with a beautiful house, maybe a farmhouse. And there's a little creek or river running through along the side of the house and a tree maybe in the middle. We'll have some interesting uh, features here in this uh, ink and wash. So the first thing I'll do is maybe I'll start to just take some simple lines and just say, okay, I'm going to divide this in half with a super light line. So you're going to do your preliminary, we call this preliminary sketching, where you're just putting in some super light lines as you look at your subject matter. So you'll basically look at my finished painting. Maybe you'll have uh, my finished painting or even when I'm done sketching this and uh, doing the ink portion before we do the watercolor paint, maybe when you see everything done in the ink portion of this video, you can hit pause there and work from that. So you'll kind of see the, the finished ink drawing um, that you can work from. That might be a way to do it. So you, you're the creator, you're the artist, you'll figure out ways to work with what I'm doing here. But again, I, I'm just going halfway across the paper because I see that from my reference work here over across from me. Halfway is um, a few few items. Let's see what we have halfway. Okay, so I see a few things that are about halfway across the picture. That's a good starting point. And then over here I see there's a, um, a barn type thing here, a barn structure, and there's some rocks down here. So that's some rocks going down and there's some a stream here. And we have the, we have like a house or a barn structure here. And we have a window over here. And again, just some, some very light sketching. We're going to go over this with ink. So when we do our ink portion, you'll see we'll get more interesting lines on here. And more definition. Okay, so now we're coming across the picture and we I see a bridge here. There's a beautiful little bridge that goes across here and it's got uh, a couple arches. So there's a, an arched bridge here and it goes down like this into the water and it goes back up again. It goes back down again there. So we have a, a bridge with a couple arched couple of arches underneath it keeping the structure strong and that provides all the stability for the bridge and there's some shadowing under the bridge there so there's some shadowing under there and some rocks so you can see I'm just doing some very light sketching and then next to this bridge we have another structure. This is another, this is a home. This might be the farmhouse here. And it's, the bottom of it is just a little bit below the, and there's some rocks that go down into the stream here. And this would be the, basically the, the house. And it kind of trails off over here. And a little bit above here is the roof line, and then the roof up here, so you can kind of see I'm working the, the general idea of things, and this is over here, there's another bit of roof there, and this comes down here, so this is the side of the, 
like that. So this is the, like that. And we have a nice, beautiful chimney over here. On this side, and then there's windows. And then it's really nice. We're gonna let's put a large tree in front here, in front of the house to sort of set the house back. This is like a farmhouse. Let's set this farmhouse back by putting a really beautiful tree right in front here that sits right alongside this bank here where the river is. And we're gonna do some more details over here by the by the river, by this stream. But let's get this large tree in here. I think this is really going to look good. So we're just going to put this in the picture like so. And I think that looks good. And we're going to have different branches coming up here. Branches over there. So lots of interesting branches on this tree. It's a large old tree that's been here many many years and let's keep that I'd like to keep let's see if we can do this here yeah let's see if we can go this way maybe like that this way we can kind of keep this interesting roof roof line here and the gable of the roof here, the gable end of the roof. We want to keep that kind of so we can see that. That looks really nice. And then the branch goes along the side there. And then we'll branch off some other branches here. And we'll do some of that more intricate details with the branches with our ink pen. So we don't have to do every detail with our uh, pencil, as you can see here. This pencil line that I'm doing now, this pencil drawing is just to get everything here pretty much the way we want it. Then we'll go in and we'll do, we'll do our ink over the top of this, our ink uh, portion. And then after that, we'll do our uh, wash, our, our watercolor wash over the top of that. And then you'll really see everything just come together beautifully. So, but here we have, we're going to say, looking at the picture, let's be aware of, always let's be aware of the light. So if I zoom out just a bit here, let me do that. I can just make the light insignia like this. So that's like the spotlight. So if you imagine there's a spotlight in the picture, it could be the sun, it's the sunlight in this picture. So pretend this is the sun. So the sun is somewhere up in the sky and it's shining down in a pattern that we can kind of be familiar with, with a spotlight. So the spotlight's on this side of the picture, shining down this way. So as we know, if there's a spotlight over here on this side of the painting, shining this way, you're going to see shadows on this side of the tree and the house and the bridge here. You'll kind of see the shadow patterns as we go. But if we put that insignia up here when we start, uh, our, you know, when we're just getting started and doing our preliminary sketch here, that's a great time you put in your insignia for your light. Where's your light coming from? Just so you have an idea. You don't necessarily have to have every thing figured out perfectly with your shadows. Just remember, if you generally know where the light is coming from, if it's coming from this side of the picture, you'll know to keep your shadows on this side over here. So the tree is going to have a shadow across the ground here, along the bank here. So there's like some grass and a bank. And then it's there's the river here. So maybe we're going to see some of those shadows across the river from the tree coming down this way. And, uh, you know, we'll see the shadows under the bridge here. The light's coming from this way. So we're going to see that dark area underneath the uh, bridge. And there's the creek running through here. And there's... So we're going to have lots of fun with this. This is just the beginning. We're just getting started here. And uh, over here, let's see. Well, let's work. continue to work over here. So this is the, the base of the tree, the, tr the main trunk of the tree here. And there's a couple more branches out here. So we're just going to keep those flowing that way. Maybe one flows down that way. There's another one here. Like that. 
and that's pretty good. If you can get them a couple of, if you can get the main trunk of the tree in, it's kind of like a V. The main trunk is going this way, across this way, almost on like a 45 degree angle. And then you have another smaller trunk coming off the tree on the bottom here, almost like a V. So almost like a, like a V shape like that. If you get that main trunk of the tree in the V shape, you're pretty good. Then you just get a couple of those smaller uh, branches and limbs going just so you have them on your paper. So when you go in and do your ink, you'll have that to refer back to when you just trace over it with your ink. Basically, that's the concept. Anyway, concept is and the method is get your sketch done first, light sketch done first, and then you're just going to go over the top of it. And that's where you have all the fun because you've already done your preliminary sketch. Then the fun is you're just taking your ink and going over the top quickly, rapidly. It looks beautiful when you're working quickly with um, ink and wash. And then once you're done with your ink, you let that dry 100%, maybe overnight, or if you use a blow dryer, make sure it's completely dry. Then we'll go over with our colors on top of this with a simple color scheme. <clears throat> and then you'll see how beautiful this all looks. So we, we've got a lot done so far. And we have, um, there's like the, uh, the bank, the grass bank is over here. So we're going to have the grass bank over here. And uh, we're, we're going to be loose about this. We're not going to get too fussy. This will be maybe some darks over here. And there's some okay, and then we have some more banks over here, like so. If you see something that doesn't look all that great, you might have sketched something and you say that doesn't look so great, then you can let you can let that go and not worry about it and just erase it. And there's there's so much going on in this painting, you don't have to worry about one little small section because there's so much exciting stuff going on throughout this whole painting and picture. You can make a couple little errors here and there, and it's never going to be seen by anybody because we have so many good things going on with this. So it's kind of like you don't have to worry about little errors or little maybe problems you might come across when you're doing your your sketch here. You know, you're just going to let it go and not worry about it. Let's get the main idea of what we're looking at here. Um, we want to get a window in over here. We see a window over here on the this house, it's probably a farmhouse here. And then two more windows here. There's another one here and another one over here, another window here. And then we just put some bottoms to the windows there and then over here we actually will there's going to be another roof over here like that which is attached to the house so this is the other roof over here and then there's another window here and another window here and then maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll just ad lib here, do a little creative. I'm going to leave this area here, kind of like uh, this is, this is a, um, this is a, uh, balcony up here where these uh, there's maybe a door over here and a window like that a door and a window and then under here there's a shadow like that and then maybe there's a fence over here too so you can make up a couple things if you like like, like a fence over here maybe like that and that looks good because you make it small over here. Can you see how I did that? We make our fence small over here and then we get larger with the posts of the fence or the pickets. And then by the time we get over here, we make them really large. That makes it feel like 
it gives you depth in your, your work here. It gives you a good sense of depth and three-dimensional quality. If you put some fence posts over here, really large, and then you make them smaller as you go over here toward this other side of the house. So the house is this farmhouse over here. Um, there's another side to the house when you walk around this portion of the house here. There's another section of the house over this way. And then that has an interesting, maybe a door over here too, and a window like that. And a shadow in here, so, but this is more in the background, so you don't have to get too worried about this part, but you leave some shadows under there too, like that. Sun is coming from this way, so you're gonna see shadows underneath these roof areas here and underneath this balcony here. And we'll see some shadowing under here too, underneath the uh, roof there. And I'll just put in a couple trim pieces on the, the roof area. The thing is not to get too carried away with too much detail when you're doing your preliminary sketch like we did here. I think this is enough. We can just leave it just the way we have here. You've seen how I've done this so far. You know, I've gotten in some interesting details, but not too carried away with too much because we want to leave, we're, we're going to be doing some real powerful ink on top of this. So when you're doing your really powerful ink um, drawings over the top of this with your uh, ink pen, your bamboo ink pen, when you're doing that over the top of this and you're filling in all your areas of ink, it's going to really pop and be really strong. So that's why I say you don't have to worry about little errors you might have here and there when you're doing your pencil sketch. That's okay. No reason to get worried about it because you have so much interesting stuff going on in here. No one's ever going to know. No one will ever realize it. They're going to see so much interesting things you're doing here. They're, they're just going to not even see the other few little errors that you might have with your pencil sketch. That's no big deal. Okay, so that's good. We have our pencil sketch in. We got pretty much the basics of everything. The, the farmhouse here with some windows. You can see the windows we did here. Another one there, maybe. Maybe there's a door over here, too. We'll do a little small door there. Um, we also have the other side section over here of the house. That's like a wing that comes off the house on the other side of the house. So we have that in. Some fence posts over here. Some picket fences. Whatever you like to make of those. You have your bank over here. Your, your grass and your bank. Your river here. We have a river running through here. A creek or river. And over here we have another farmhouse on the other side. This might be a another house next door to the um, this larger one here. You can come up with your own ideas on that. And uh, I'll put a chimney on here to make this one a little more interesting here. Like that. And then over here too, that's the only thing I didn't do. We might want to add that. Just some Beyond over here, there's a hill and just some trees in the, in the distance here. Do it very lightly though, nothing too much, just a little bit, just so you have some interesting trees and things over here and a little bit of a distant mountain over here, just to keep things, uh, you know, engaging with the background. We want to have a background in there so that you feel like you can see into the far distance in this painting. So that gives you that real nice feeling of three-dimensional quality. If you have this over here, this uh, three-dimensional quality of the trees over here. Like that. And I just scratch in with my pencil, just some ideas, and we'll do some more with the ink. Okay, and then maybe we'll do some figures. Maybe we'll do some figures over here. Some figures over here. Maybe there's another couple here. Like that. Maybe there's a figure over here.
and I think that looks good. Okay, so let's take a break. We did a lot of pencil drawing here, and then we'll uh, get started with our ink over the top of this pencil drawing. Okay, so we'll be right back. And I always mention, uh, if you haven't subscribed, right on the right-hand side below is the subscribe button. Basically, all that does is let you know the next time we're creating a new video, so you can follow along, and uh, you won't lose me. This way, you know, you might say, oh, I forgot that guy's name that did that really cool ink and wash, or that watercolor painting that guy did. I forget his name. What's his name? At least if you subscribe, you won't lose me. You'll have me saved in your YouTube channel, and this way when you open up YouTube the next time, you'll just see that I've created a new video, and that's all. YouTube just wants you to keep in contact with me. If you like my channel, you like what I'm doing here, you like this artwork, if maybe you just like to watch, that's great. If you decide you want to start painting and drawing in watercolor, that's phenomenal too. You can join along and start painting along and drawing with me on this channel. We have thousands of people coming here every weekend, every week, every day. We're always working uh, with watercolor here on this channel. So you always know you're going to have a really lot of interesting watercolor information of drawing and painting in watercolor. So keep coming back. If you hit that subscribe button, you're just going to be alerted that uh, we've been making some new videos, and we make new videos every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're here always creating videos for you, and I always say, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. That really helps me as a YouTuber. I get a lot of um, uh, opportunities for my videos to be shared with other artists and other people that like art if you hit that thumbs up button. So if you can hit the thumbs up button, I really appreciate it. And um, let's get started with the ink in just a second. I'm just going to take a quick break, if that's okay, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we're getting back and we're going to get started here with our ink portion of our drawing. So I'm just going to have my two pens here. I'll have my ink well. And then uh, what I'd like to do is first, I'll take just a uh, quick paper towel and put that down on my uh, working surface here. I don't want to pour my ink over the top of my paper and have it run and possibly drip onto the paper. So that best thing to do is to ensure that doesn't happen is you have a a paper towel over the top of your working surface or you do it to the side but this is fine and you can kind of see I didn't fill this up more than just about a quarter of the way up the uh, can um, this container this small container I have for the um, for my ink that I'm going to use my ink well so this is my ink well I have it only a quarter of the way filled and the rest of it's empty I don't want to have it halfway filled or three quarters of the way filled. All you need is a little bit on the bottom of your ink well to work with. And then if you run out, you can always add a little more with the squeeze top here. So you can kind of see I have that, the squeeze top here. And you just close that like that. Put that alongside. Ink, I always mention, is very, very problematic if you have nice furniture and you work inside of your house and you might be working in your living room or in your kitchen, you might have some nice furniture, nice upholstery, upholstered chairs. Always remember, when you're working with ink like this, you have to be really careful. Cover everything up with, with uh, sheets or uh, towels or blankets, anything like that, so that if something does spill, it's not going to ruin your furniture, your carpeting, your um, you know upholstered items, um, your clothing. If you're wearing nice clothing when you work sometimes, try to wear some older clothing, especially when you're doing ink. Watercolors are not so bad. I've really learned over the years, if you're working with watercolors, sometimes if you spill a little bit of watercolor on your clothes or on something, it's not a big deal. It usually cleans up pretty easily. But with you, when you're working with ink, you have to really make sure you have all of your expensive, like upholstered items, again, carpeting. If you have nice clothes you're wearing, maybe you want to wear like a um, apron on top of your clothes so that you don't, if you do splash or spill something, it's going to, your clothing will be covered, your shoes, whatever it is. Just be careful. That's all I mentioned because it is really ink. Once that spills on something, it really is hard to, um, to repair that uh, problem. So, all right, let's get started. I'll start out with my larger ink pen, bamboo ink pen. And I just take the ink pen, dip it in. And then I just start to take the ink. And I put it on thick. Now I, what I recall is the light is coming from over here this way. So really the dark side 
of this tree is going to be over here on this underside and then the lighter side of the tree is over here so you can leave more light on the left side of your tree trunk here like so so the darker the darker side of the tree is going to be the left side like this here like that so that's the lighter side of the tree and the darker side is over here on the left on the right side like that okay so you can kind of see we're already getting a good um, feel for doing our tree trunk here and let's get some of that shadowing like this and there's some shadowing on the bank of this uh, have fun with this scrape around with your your bamboo pen and then we're doing the shadow of the tree here and, and that goes over to the water now when you get to the water section of the shadowing of this tree and the reflection you don't have to make it solid you can kind of just have it something like that so a little irregular and jagged and not all solid so you can kind of see how I left a little bit of um, white paper there and it's not all filled it's not all solid over here is more solid you can kind of see that over here the shadow on the ground area where the grass is the shadow is more solid but then once you get into the water the water has reflections and light sparkling around and things so you, you you'll see partial shadows and reflection of the tree once you're in the water area there where this creek is in the in the river and then we'll start working up here and we'll do some more of these Okay, so I dip in my bamboo ink pen and like that. And a little more over here so you can continue to and some of the important things to remember is if you can try not to lean into your ink with your hand that's really kind of good so maybe it's a good bet to start I like to start with the darkest darks first so let me say that I'm starting with the real darkest dark in the picture and that's the tree here so that's the real dark dark here kind of right in the center of this composition you see that right that's the real powerful dark in here that's why I did that first and then from there I, I could let this dry I think I will do that I think I'm gonna let this dry but I can also go in here so you work 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 with what feels comfortable and remember try not to lean in and have a problem with leaning into your work and starting to make a mess of things by leaning into your your ink with your hand so that's the key thing here with ink and wash is if you can just remember to sort of work strategically if I might say and then you know you can let things dry for 20 minutes or use a blow dryer um, maybe after 15 or 20 minutes of doing some of this you say all right I'm gonna take a break use the blow dryer blow dry off all this area so it's hundred percent dry and then you can go back in and start working again and then you can lean on top of this area where the tree is let's say because it's already hundred percent dry but you really have to be really careful make sure it's all dry before you start leaning on top of anything with your hand because I always have my hand on the board when I'm working when I'm drawing so that's why I say that because I think many of you do the same thing you'll have your hand resting on the paper all the time like I do and uh, so that means you'll want to ensure that you're not um, leaning on top of fresh black ink because that'll really make a mess of things all right so here we go the bridge area here we have some interesting stuff going on with the bridge and let's have some stones Maybe this is a stone bridge. Make some, make a keystone here, like that. 
some stones like that. So there's some stones, stone archway here for the bridge. Like that. Have fun with it. Don't be perfect about it. Just kind of scribble in some interesting things. And there's some stonework here too. Like that. Okay. And then uh, a little bit of water. We want some a little bit of water kind of flowing around here. Like that. That looks pretty good. I'm not going to... You can always go back in and add more ink to your drawing. So you're better off putting less ink on to start with. So as you're working your painting, start off with less ink. Get some in there, right? You're, we're drawing, we're basically tracing over all of our... We're tracing over all of our, our, our drawing here that we did in pencil. Our, We're doing doing that. There's a shadow under the chimney there, and there's a shadow under the trim of the roof, and there's some roof shingles there. And there's a wall there. There's some more grass and some hills and rocks. Just try to kind of get the feel for the, the the river here and the stream. There's a stream running along here. And again, we're having fun, right? This is fun. This is really relaxing. You're just going over the top of your pencil drawing, essentially, and capturing the uh, darks with your ink. So you're just thinking about Where's the light coming from? Well, it's coming from this way. So I know to put the shadow on the chimney over here on the right side. The light's coming this way. And the same thing over here. We can do another chimney up here. We have the shadow under the chimney there and then on the side. And then on the sides of the clay pots on the chimneys there. And then we have more windows here so we can start getting some like this there's a door over here and some windows so have fun with this you're just taking your time you just when you need run out of ink you dip in your ink pen a little bit tap a little bit off already I can feel I just leaned into my paint over here on this side so I just leaned into my paint over there and you can kind of see on my hand you can see on my hand there, I've already leaned into that a little bit. No big deal. If you lean into something, no big deal. You just don't worry about it. Just blend it in a little bit like that and you're fine. So I think what I'll do at this point is let's take a break and I'll use the blow dryer and I'll blow dry this whole section here so this is all 100% dry and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Then I can go back in and continue working on the house over here and uh, the section over here on the left side of the house. I can start working on the fencing. I can work on the distant trees and distant mountain over here and some of the creek in this little creek and stream. I can work on all these things, but if I, the only thing is let's dry it off first because we have a lot of ink already on the paper. That's the key because I know I'm going to lean into it again. I always lean into my ink when I'm doing my ink and washes. And so to minimize that problem, it's it really simple. You take a quick break once you do a little section and then use a blow dryer and blow dry off that section really good so that it's 100% dry. And then we'll come back and start up again, okay? So we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I just used the blow dryer to blow dry all of this off here. All this is now dry, the ink. Now I can continue on working and I don't have to really worry so much. I can lean my hand anywhere I want on here. It's 100% dry and when I was using the blow dryer I was very very careful 
to make sure I could really look at that closely and make sure there was no puddles of black ink anywhere. That's really the key. So now I'm free to go back in here and start to work on the um, rest of that farmhouse here. So we have a farmhouse and some shadowing underneath the uh, gable end of this rooftop here. And there's some shadowing over here too. And there's um, Just get the edge of the house over there. And there's some of the the lawn. And there's some of the. I dip my ink in the well. Get a little bit of ink on there, but tap a little bit off. I'm trying to tap off some of the. Maybe with some of these finer details, I can get. Uh, I can use the smaller. I'll keep using the larger this larger, for these larger sections here of, of ink. You can kind of see this is kind of darker sections over here, larger sections of ink that are dark. So let's get that with this larger bamboo pen. And then I can go back in and get some other smaller details with the uh, smaller bamboo pen. But right now, it seems like um, I can really get a good amount of uh, ink on here as I go and again I already just you can kind of see I maybe I'll make that door a little larger over here since I leaned into the ink a little bit and a little bit of ink here and there is not going to be a problem too much anyway I guess the best way to do it is really make work maybe work left to right. So if you're a right-handed person, you would just start over here maybe. Maybe once you get in the large tree here and a few of the other features maybe. You could even let this go. Maybe you get the tree in first and then you let that dry 100%. You blow dry the tree off and then you just start over on this section and you work your way all the way through everything all the way to the left to right so that you don't lean into the ink. Because I can tell right now a lot of you are going to be like I am right now and you're going to start leaning into things. And that can really cause some really, really, you know, unpleasant looking smudges and things. So don't let that happen. Just if you're left-handed, you'd start over here. Start on the right side of your painting if you're left-handed. So if you're left-handed, you'd start over here with your ink on the left side, on the right side if you're left-handed. And you just work your drawing across like this. And just keep working this way. Maybe blow dry off some. And keep working all the way across until you're, you're completed. If you're right-handed like myself here, you'd want to start over here on the right side, a left side of your painting over here. And just keep working everything all the way this way. And this way you can lean on your paper the whole time because you're just going to do everything from the left side over to your right side. That's really going to be the best way to do it. So I'm just going to continue with that approach and we'll see how it works out but I'm sure it's going to work out good. We have our figure over here. And there's some fence posts over here. Okay, and we're going to continue on here. So I have a lot of thick and again you can see I leaned into some more paint here and you can also use some white. Later on in the, in the painting we'll do a couple corrections on some of the smudges. You'll see we can correct a few of those. but. 
Again, avoid the whole situation of smudging by just starting on the one side and go across that, you know, to the to the right. Most of you are probably right-handed, so you'll start over here and just work the whole way across. And you don't want to be um, crossing over and back back and forth on both sides of the painting. Stick with just one side, work your way across, and that's what we're doing here. Maybe I'm going to start using my smaller ink uh, bamboo pen. I can get some more finer lines with this, you can kind of see, and it also holds a nice amount of ink too. These are really nice to use, these ink pens. So that's really great, and then you can just do a couple of lines like this. Okay, makes for some really good lines, fine lines. So I just stir around, tap off a little bit. And again, just looks good. Okay, I'm just trying to get a little bit of the tree trunk there, setting nice and solid on the ground, like that. Okay, and then this way we have our balcony over here. on our balcony. And I'll finish up these few windows over here. Like that. And that looks pretty good. We have a lot of... Okay, a little bit of shingles here. And I think we can do the, just these very fine light details here, the, the back round with these branches and tree trunks over here. Very lightly though, not too much. That's why I'm using the very, very fine, small here so we can have a little Maybe I'm going to have quite a few of these trees kind of flowing this way. Since we have this tree flowing this way, this large tree this way, let's keep the other ones flowing that way too. Just an idea to make things look a little bit more, um, you know, like they're working together. The trees are, maybe there's some wind right now in this picture. We Maybe we'll create some feeling of wind so the trees are maybe blowing and We can have some 
little bits of grass maybe and, and things like that. Some dots. And a little bit of grasses and things like that along the bottom of the fence here. And I think that's fine. The, re the next step we're going to do is some watercolor wash over the top of this. That's why we call this ink and wash. We're going to get some beautiful washes of uh, watercolor paint on here next. So we the first part, well this is actually the second part obviously. First part was our preliminary sketch. This here is our ink wash over the top of that preliminary sketch, pencil drawing. And now the third part will be we're going to go in and do some watercolor washes over the top of this. And you're going to see how beautiful it looks once we add some color into this. And I want you to have fun with this. Try a couple Tried a couple different times if you, you know it's going to take a few times to get used to maybe ink and wash if you haven't worked with it before but some of you i know really enjoy ink and wash and you've asked me to do more ink and washes uh, recently i saw a few comments in the comment section as well as a few of you emailed me and said chris you haven't done ink and wash in a while so that's why i'm doing this because i know many of you really enjoy it quite a few of you do and um, it's really a fun technique and method to use so um why not let's try it out and see what we can come up with. We really have a nice solid ink drawing over the top of this now. And now our, our main goal now is let's get some beautiful, let's get some really nice uh, ink uh, watercolor washes over the top of this. You can do a couple details over here on the windows, like this. Maybe a detail over the door. Maybe we can do a little light fixture here. Maybe another one over here. A couple light fixtures. Okay, we'll be right back and we'll start painting. Okay, so now we're gonna start our washes. And uh, always remember, you can always do a few touch-ups with a Sharpie marker. You can use a Sharpie marker, absolutely, to um, do a couple touch-ups here and there if you need to, or any kind of permanent marker. There's uh, These work great though. Sharpies are fantastic for blending in some more details with your ink and washes. So you can use a fine point Sharpie too as well. These are the fine point ones you can kind of see here. You know, you can do some more really super fine details if you need to. So that is always a fantastic tool you have. Once you're done with your ink and wash, and right before you're ready to paint, you might say, oh, I need to add a little more detail. And you can also do this once your watercolor washes are over the top of this. You can still go back in once that's 100% dry. You can go back and do your Sharpie at the very, very end after the watercolor has completely 100% dried. So I'm going to use a... Uh, da Vinci travel brush, a number eight, Da Vinci round travel brush, number eight, to get my washes on here. And I hope you'll uh, use something similar in size. So you can kind of see it's a good size round brush. It's probably the size of the windows in this pa painting here and doors. So it's a good size brush and it's not too big, but it's not either too small. It's kind of right, it's like a medium sized brush, really. So let's get started. We're going to um, mix up some really beautiful colors here. Let's go with some burnt umber. 
some greens. Let's do some sap green. Burnt umber. Some cerulean blue in there. Warm and cool everywhere. Um, some burnt sienna. I'll just kind of experiment with colors along this top section here. Uh, yellow ochre. Like that. So I'm sort of getting some ideas here. So some burnt umber. Really strong straight paint there. Burnt sienna. Straight burnt sienna up there. So let's make like a, a lighter wash and then start going in and get some darker straight paint out onto the palette too, like that. And um, a little bit of French ultramarine blue for some darker darks with some green. And uh, already you can see a really wonderful mixture of colors and nothing too fancy, right? We just did the burnt umber, burnt sienna. A little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue over here on the right for that darker dark with some sap green. And then some yellow ochre and, uh, you know, raw umber. Raw umber here. A little bit of blue too, warm and cool everywhere. So we'll take a little bit of cerulean blue, get some more blue out there on the palette. So when you have a good mixture of colors like this, that gives you a real good, um, maybe even some cadmium lemon yellow. Just so we maybe have a little bit of a cadmium yellow too, maybe. Just so we have a little bit of a lively looking green. So I have fresh clean water. I'm going to actually change my water now. I've been rinsing my brush now, mixing all these colors. I'll change the water out and put fresh clean water in my container. This way I just have a little more fresh water to start with. And then I'll start in, let's do the roof first. So I'm going to do some roof colors here. And I just, really, watercolor is fun because you just, you just put it on the paper. You just touch it down onto the paper with your brush and you can just let it go and it does what it does. Look how good that looks. I don't have to really do anything there. Then maybe some chimney color. That's the burnt sienna. I can go straight in and get straight burnt sienna. Like that. And that looks good just on, in itself. And then uh, what else do we have here? Let's do a little bit of roof over here too. Maybe this one's a little different color. We could maybe mix up our colors a little bit. Maybe we don't want to do the same colors over and over and over again. So maybe we'll do that for the roofs over here. And then uh, how about um, maybe a light wash over here? Just a light wash, not much color. Uh, maybe a little bit of that gold, uh, the yellow maybe in there. And can you see how great that looks? That the ink has dried and it's not you know, you see how the ink, once we get that ink on the paper and we let it dry 100% and I use the blow dryer to blow dry the whole ink drawing once I was done with the ink drawing and now it's not budging. That ink is staying just the way it is and it's not causing us any problems with it ballooning or blossoming or making ugly looking, uh, you know, uh, blossoms and, and cauliflowers of nastiness looking. It looks fantastic. It's not doing anything. It's staying right where it is. The black ink is perfect. And then let's uh, work on this side here of the house. And uh, let's see, maybe we'll go with a, we'll do something a little different. Let's, I'll take a little bit of my palette and clean off a section here. And let's go on with some alizarin crimson with a little bit of that mixture there, just to gray it down a little bit. Maybe a little blue.
That looks great. Perfect, look at that. And then maybe a little bit of shadowing up here, maybe a little bit, just under the eaves here a little bit. Fantastic. And then this is more in shadow over here. So that's a lizard and crimson. I maybe mixed a little bit too much there, so I just blot up a little bit. I'll take some of that too here. This is a little darker though. Let's see if I can mix in a little bit more. Cerulean blue, burnt umber a little bit. I'm trying to mix up a little bit of a different wash over here on this side. Like that. So that's more in shadow. So that's why I'm going a little darker with that over here. And then if something happens where you go over a line, you take your you take your tissue or your paper towel and you just fold it into a line and just lift up like that. Can you see how I did that? And this way I get that sharp line where the house corner is here. splashes over here. Okay, so let's continue. Let's do some more golden color here. This is the bridge. Do a little bit of a gold color there. Maybe a little blue in there too, just to warm and cool everywhere. So a couple of spots of blue. And blend that out a little bit. And a little wash on top of the bridge there. And maybe we'll do some green here. Green and let's mix up a little. Sap green, maybe a little bit of cadmium yellow, lemon. So that's the grass areas here. Then if you want to get a really sparkle of color, yeah, add in some of that cadmium lemon yellow. Maybe in one spot. And then the rest you can kind of, you can gray down the rest of the grass maybe. Think we're really getting there. I think this is really coming together beautifully. Um, I think let's get some clean palette. So I'm going to take a, some paper towel, dampen some paper towel with some water, and just you know clean a section of palette out so we can start with some new colors. We want to make sure we add those new colors into the painting. Let's do some cobalt blue maybe. Some really nice cobalt blue. French ultramarine blue. Cobalt blue, a little cerulean blue. Kind of a mixture of the three blues that we use most often. And then let's add some in here and there. A 
while we have a chance, let's add that in. I'll just try to add some in here and there of these three colors before I put that in the water. And now I'll go in and put some of that in the water. Like that. And some beautiful watercolor. There we go. Just some blue. And we used our three blues there. You know, you can add in a little more excitement of color if you want, like that. I think that looks even better yet. Cobalt blue and over here in the maybe in the right there, add in a little more excitement. Maybe some green along the banks here. Like that. That kind of ties in the water with the the green. You could make some darker wash, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. And you make a little darker wash along there. Looks good. And then I would say we can do some more cerulean blue for the sky wash just to get a just some sky wash in there. Let the water color do the work for you. Get it in there. And let it just do its work. I'm making a very uh, subdued sky wash. I'm not going with too much color or a lot of fanciness. Splash on a little bit of color and let it flow on down. And I think that's good enough. And then we'll come back and let this dry and we'll do the distant um, hill over here. And I think we'll be uh, complete. So I'm hoping you're having fun so far. If you see any big puddles of water as you're working, you lift them up with a bit of tissue. And that's all, just to lift up some paint. But I think we have a really beautiful look to this so far. I see a couple things I want to touch up as I come back in again once we're done. So this is a perfect time before you take a break. So we're taking a break now toward the end of the painting. We just have one more probably bit of washes to do. Maybe just a couple little finishing touches. That's a perfect time as I'm stopping now and looking at it. I'm going, okay, I know what I want to do when I come back in again and um, work a little more. And I can see a few things like I want to do uh, a chimney over here, some red chimney color here for some bricks, brick chimney over here. I want to do the distant uh, mountain over here, maybe with some purplish color. Uh, and I think that's really about it. I think everything else is looking pretty good. Mm, yeah, everything else looks pretty good. So I'm just going to do a few more details and then we'll call this complete. Hope you're having fun again. And um, I hope again, if you're liking this video, you're going to thumbs up. And uh, also you're going to subscribe on the right hand side below. If you like my videos, please come back again. Work with me, work with all of us here. We work every week, every month, and we're working year after year together here with the watercolors. And we're doing some ink and wash now. We'll do these more often. I haven't done an ink and wash painting in probably about a, six months or so. So this is a nice, fun 
um, technique to come back to, and we'll do more of these two in the future, especially if you like this and thumbs up, I'll do more. That's how you let me know which paintings you like the best. Your thumbs up indicates to me that's what you want to see more of. And so that's our uh, little thing we have between us. You want more of a certain type of subject matter or style or technique that I'm doing, just thumbs up or leave a comment and say, yeah, Chris, much more ink and washes. We really like these. Or if you don't say anything and I don't see a lot of thumbs up, then I just know that you, you like it, but you maybe you like the regular watercolors uh, that we do on a regular basis. But um, we're having a lot of fun with this here with the ink and wash. And you can see it really looks beautiful. And we'll come back and just finish up for about the next 10 or 15 minutes after a break. And then uh, that'll be it. And we'll uh, be starting up again soon. And uh, so let's come back for another five or 10 more minutes to complete this painting. And then um, we'll have a really gorgeous looking painting. We can put a mat on and frame it. And uh, we'll see you in just a second. All right, we're actually right at the uh, point in the painting where we're finishing up and we're just gonna get a few more details in here that we said we wanted to kind of focus in on. We were gonna do the distant mountain over here. And that's like, a am using my uh, ultramarine violet, which is actually uh, uh, Windsor Newton ultramarine violet. That's purple, basically a purple color. Like that. So we just do that distant mountain like that. And then we can even um, add a little bit of mix of color in there just to give it a little bit of modulation of color so it's not just all one color we have a little bit of a mix in there and i think that really looks good that sort of makes that purplish um, color in the distance here gives us that really nice feeling of a distant mountain in the back behind this uh, creek and bridge here so building more three-dimensional quality into your painting is really going to make a big benefit to your to your painting. So that's what we did there. We put in that little bit of a mountain, ultramarine violet, and then we added in a little bit of the green and brown and red hues to uh, just uh, kind of have a, a modulation of uh, warm and cool into that mountainous section. I think it looks fine with the trees that we have there sitting behind the bridge. That looks fine. We have some figures on the bridge. Looks good. Um, I think maybe we could do a little, a little bit of that green over here. So that might be some areas of grass under the, uh, Actually, on the other side of the bridge, there's some hills and things like that, and grass, as well as water. So that looks good. And uh, other than that, I think we wanted to maybe, I wanted to do a little bit of a chimney color here, just to, some brick colors there. That always looks good. Some brick colors there. And there's some more... French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Maybe there's some shingles here, like so. Like that. And a little more, some chimney clay pots up top. And if you want, you can even do a few more details here. You might do a little small, a couple of, maybe some small chimney, wood burning stove pipes here. A couple maybe up here too. Maybe there's a chimney. Maybe a couple of uh, window. Um, some details if you want in your windows with the Sharpie, a fine point Sharpie. You can always add a couple 
couple more details in there just to give some things a little more um, explanation, so to speak. A couple more dots. Maybe there's some maybe there's some stonework over here. You want to add in some just some very very um, very loose and gestural, gestural uh, shapes of some round stones on this bridge that you don't have to really get too involved with every detail of it, but maybe just some round kind of boulder type shapes here and there. Same with up here. Maybe there's some more boulders up here. Maybe the bridge has some interesting uh, lines across here like so. I just build in a little bit of more details over here. Maybe there's some more details with the windows like that. So you can do a few more details here and there just to Maybe there's a small vent up here on the top, like that. So a few more details and you're, you know, really all set. And, and I think that's fine. Um, there might be some shadowing under here by the fences, the fence posts. And these are, maybe these are picket fences or metal fences. You can add a little shadowing so we can pretend those are shadows on the fence. Pickets. And we can maybe sharpen up a few. It's a figure over here, maybe. Maybe that figure has a hat on there. Figures over here look good. Yeah, so we're pretty much. Uh, Everything is looking good. And maybe I'll take my other Sharpie over here and just maybe fill in a little darker darks over here. Like so. Maybe a little bit of some water, some and then I say I have to call it quits because if I do too much more, it might start getting a little too busy. A little bit of a problem is sometimes we do too many details. So be careful of that, not to do too many details. Because uh, sometimes we get carried away, and next thing we know, we're really kind of making the painting not as pleasant and pleasing looking because we're adding too much detail to it. But here, I just added a few more branches. I think that looks okay. Like this. And uh, maybe a couple more branches here. And I call that complete. So thanks so much for coming by. Again, everyone, have fun. Enjoy the journey of watercolor. Enjoy creating some beautiful ink and washes here. We've covered the whole process from A to Z, the whole enchilada. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching again, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.